Hi guys, welcome to this video. So um, this this is going to be all about how I fitted the Corsa C electric power steering in my Mark II Escort. Um, a, a lot of people seem to think that you can't do it with a Corsa C column. Uh, a lot of people recommend the Corsa B. Um, I, mainly I think that's just because of the size and, and the style of it really, but um, the Corsa C is a lot cheaper than the B. They're, they're getting silly money now, the Corsa Bs, if you can find them. Uh, and they don't last forever, so uh, the Corsa C columns can be had for about 50 quid now. So um, before we start looking in the car, um, we'll take a look at this spare column that I've got here. <coughs> um, a lot of people say that you can't use it because the ECU is fixed to the column. Well, it's not. It's only two bolts, and that comes straight off. Um, it's got all the all the gubbins and stuff on it. This is a non-adjustable one. I think you can get some of them that tilt. I, I'm not 100% sure, but um, basically all you need to do to this is unbolt the ECU so that you can mount that somewhere in the car. Um, when I did mine, I cut this bracket off. There's, there's two welds along here. Grind that off, and then you just need to remove this um, ignition barrel and all the electrical gubbins. Turn it over. There's a there's a roll pin through there, and it's been quite a while since I've done mine now, but I think that gets it off. I remember messing about with it for a while trying to get the ignition barrel off. But anyway, once you manage to get all of that off, um, you're left with a loose. There's a loose bearing then because this is not around it. There's a bearing at the top, obviously with your spline shaft coming out the end. So you'll need to get. Um, a cap machined that will slot over the top of that bearing and butt up or overlap the rest of the column and on mine I've just got three three small welds just holding that cap on to hold the bearing in place and that seems to work quite well so um, the other one that I had that I've fitted in the car came with the knuckle and you probably need that really the coarser knuckle because the the bottom section of it below the the UJ is hollow, so you can slide a shaft inside it and weld it up, which is a lot easier than trying to get a knuckle with like an escort spline on that end and a whatever spline this Vauxhall one is on the top. So if you can get one with the original knuckle, that'd help. Um, <clears throat> I use this bracket on mine, the original rear bracket or top bracket, whichever way around it goes, I use that. And these two mounting points. Um, that's it, really. I, I think the motor might be slightly bigger on this one as well than the Corsa B. But as you'll see in my car shortly, it's not it's not the end of the world. It still fits. So. Um, I thought, I thought I'd do this video now because I'm in the middle of doing some wiring and stuff in the car and I've got all of the dash and the interior and stuff out so I'll get the torch and we'll um, have a look. Okay, so we'll start at the top. Um, you, can get, you can get bosses, steering wheel bosses, cheap enough for the Corsa C spline because it is different to the B. Um, <clears throat> this is a universal indicator stalk, so the the column is uh, 40, 43 mil diameter, so I've just got a universal um, indicator light stalk there. Um, I've got I've got another video on that, all this wiring and stuff that I'm doing. Um, that that video is already on my YouTube channel, so there's a link up the top if you're interested in how I've how I've done the wiring for indicators and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so yeah that that piece there is I tell you what I'll um, I'll unbolt this indicator stalk and you can see the the bracket then that I right you should be able to see that now it's all nicely scratched the paint because I've been taking that on and off but you can just about see where this where the sleeve is uh, welded on there's a weld there but basically that's that's just a cap that's um, an interference fit on the, there's like a lip 
on the end of this and that just slots on it to tap it on with a hammer um, the guys at Harry Hockley Motorsport machined that for me and then that, that just stops the shaft from wiggling round so um, that's uh, it's nice and tight in there it doesn't move okay so let's talk about mounting then um, I understand that this is going to be different for for every car really but a, a lot of rally cars now have got a dash bar on the roll cage I know they're not all in the same place and to be honest where my dash bar is it's probably it probably made it more difficult for me to mount the mount the column um, I think it probably would have been better if this bar was a bit higher up up here in, in front of the bottom of the dash and then it would have given me a lot more room for the motor and the chunky part of the column but the way the way that the main mountings are fixed this is um these are m8 threaded bosses and uh, they're just welded they're chamfered and profiled and then welded to the bar and then obviously just m8 bolts through the bottom so it, was, it took two of us just to hold it in the right place and then i was sat in the seat and um, just tacked it on really and I just got the basically I just got the column exactly where I wanted it for the steering wheel position and then tacked it and then we, I sort of worried about the rest of it afterwards um, which I could because of my floor mounted pedal box I didn't need to worry about the, the the shaft itself getting in the way of any pedals or whatever so the only thing I, I was governed by was the height of my pedal box here I mean so if, if it was any if the column was any lower, I'd be catching my toes on it. Um, so the, the the top mounting then, that's a piece of 25 mil tube welded to the column itself with a flat plate on it, and then that's bolted through the original column holes. That's pretty straightforward. Um, that's I put that in after. I wasn't going to do that, but once I'd um, bolted it in at the bottom I, I needed to triangulate it because it was flexing a bit so that's that's bolted into there um, it's quite awkward to film this and hold the torch so then on the back it's quite difficult to see because I've got loom all over it but this bar it, it basically bolts on it sandwiches the, the original dash so it's the same on the back but that's 25 mil box section there with a plate on the end um, and that goes up to this big bracket that I've made here so that's a bracket that bolts onto the original upper steering column bracket there and then it bolts the bottom of it bolts um, so there's like a 90 degree bracket a 90 degree plate on the end of the vertical and that bolts onto this bracket here so it's essentially just a 90 degree bracket steel plate straight up it is it is profiled that way so it's bent that way as well um, welded on well it's bolted to this but welded to the bottom of the vertical and then the, the top of the vertical then has a like a angled piece it, I just tacked it all up in the car really made it up as we went along so um, like I say, every every column is going to be positioned slightly different, but that's how I did it. And it's it's not the prettiest looking bracket, but it's nice and strong. And what worked out quite well was that if you can see those M8 bolts there, the ECU bolts to the back of it, so it's quite handy. It's bolted in up there out of the way, and it, the the standard cables with just the perfect length to still reach down to where they were so they didn't need extending so they all plugged in as they as they should have um, yeah I think that's, that's about it for mounting obviously the way that that is bolted on there now so it's got one two three four five six seven eight bolts and that's all triangulated so it doesn't flex anywhere that's absolutely solid it doesn't move at all um, the 
guess we'll have a look at the the bottom end next. All right, I don't know how well you can see that. It's a bit fiddly to get down. So this is the original uh, knuckle off the courser that I was telling you about. And um, let's try and get down. Just about to see there that it's you can see that it's hollow and it's sleeved over the shaft that goes through into the engine bay so that that's pretty straightforward it's just a shaft slotted into it and welded um, and so obviously now that that's that shaft is welded to this knuckle so it comes off in one piece the other end of that the other end of that shaft has got the escort spline um, and well torch just fell over now so while we're down here you'll see that I have to move the hole over the original holes there where that clutch pipe goes through so I basically move the hole over the same size as the, the hole next to it if that makes sense plated the hole up and the edge of the new hole was touching the edge of the old hole um, obviously you, if you've run in a standard style pedal box that comes up it comes down from up, up the top um, you'd be governed where you can put your your rod through so it seemed to work out quite well for me to be honest the only thing that I still need to finish sorting out is the rubber grommet I'm still using the original escort grommet but the hole in the center is a bit bigger than the steering shaft that I've got so I've just got a piece of rubber over the shaft that slides down but because it's at an angle going through the bulkhead when you turn the steering, the, it just pushes the rubber back up. So I need to I need to get something sorted a bit better for that, really. Um, we'll go into the engine bay, take a look at the other side, if I can see it. Um, and then we'll go back inside and uh, have a look at wiring. Can't really see. I wonder if you can see down there. Well, you can just about see where the shaft comes through. But I mean, I don't really need to show you the bottom piece to be fair. It's just how it would be on a normal escort. It's just got an ordinary, well, I've got a group four knuckle and then a spline shaft. That, that's just one shaft that comes through and it's bolted in. So that's. Uh, that's pretty straightforward anyway. So we'll talk about the wiring. That's as simple as it comes as well, really. It's four wires. You've got that big blue plug there, which is a heavy duty power. It's got like a, I don't know, like a 30 or might be a 50 amp big inline fuse and a big heavy earth. Um, and then I went for this little black box here which is a Rix engineering power steering controller and it comes all pre pre-wired with that white plug on there with the yellow and green wires I think it is given down um, that that white plug under the blue one it comes all pre-wired with the the adjuster you can adjust the assistance and then so that that controller has also got you need to put ignition live and earth to that only on these these light, light gauge um, cables, so that's uh, that's pretty straightforward to wire in. I just zip tied that onto my bracket. So um, I'll uh, I'll put the steering wheel back on, and then we'll we'll turn it on and um, just have a look at the uh, adjuster, the assistance, and and just show how different how how good the range is on that you you can pretty much go from no assistance all the way to be able to turn it with one finger nearly so just uh, put the steering wheel back on. so 
Right, so we've got that to fully, well, it says off on the sticker, but it does have some assistance, but it's, when it, when you stop still, you can't, you still can't steer it with one hand. It's too stiff. Just put it all the way up to full. It's much easier now. Well, not, not quite one finger, but really light. And when you're driving, that's way too light. I never have it up like that. It's just handy sometimes for parking and coming in and out of the garage. I tend to have it right there. So it's just, you can just about do it with one hand. There are some cheaper, cheaper controllers out, out there that you can buy. I think this one was about 50 quid. It might be a bit more, maybe 70, but um, it, it works well. That does. I haven't had any trouble with it yet. So, well, the, the only thing that I've noticed actually is um, sometimes when you first turn the ignition on to start the car up, it can be a bit stiff. It's like, it's like it takes a couple of seconds for it to wake up. But other other than that, it's it's great. I can't really fault it. So uh, I am aware that you can buy kits for escorts, and if you're building like a just a standard road car, then it'd probably be worthwhile getting getting a, a kit that's designed to just just bolt straight on, especially if it's like a pristine show car. But mine's not. It's just a rally car. Although I do try and make things nice and pretty, but. Um, I, that's why I went for the, the Corsa C setup anyway, just because it was cheap. It cost me 50 quid, so um, we'll, we'll see how I get on with it. I, a lot of people say that they're not as strong, the motors are weaker and stuff, but at 50 quid, I know I've got I know I've got a spare one there. It's not the end of the world if you had to put a new one on it every year for, for the price. So and the only other thing to mention really is... Um, depending on your seating position would depend on how far back or forward you'd want to mount the column my seats all the way back you couldn't go any further it's almost touching the roll cage there it's as far back as i can go if it was a road car you could go a little bit further but that's where the seat is and uh so obviously i put my column to suit my seating position i'm quite long in the leg but my arms aren't that long so I wanted the steering wheel quite close but my pedals are quite far away so it turned out okay anyway I just just made it up as I go along like I did with everything else so um, hopefully that that'll uh, help a few of you when you're making decisions on what to do with your power steering there's a few guys that had asked me for some more info on on how I did it so I'm sure there's other people that have done it differently and, and better or worse or whatever, but that's that's how I did it and it works. So um, if you find the video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and um, we'll see you on the next one.